Hello and welcome to video lecture series in sociology. Today we are going to discuss chapter 8 titled as social movements from your textbook social change and development in India. We have divided this chapter into 6 parts. In the previous lectures on this chapter, so far we have discussed about the definition and features of a social movement or what is meant by a social movement. How social movements have been decisive in bringing about change in society. We have also discussed about types of social movements depending upon scope, target and kind of change they try to bring about in society. In this lecture, we will discuss about another differentiation between the new and old type of social movements. As you know that in social movements, large number of people organize themselves to take up collective action to promote or resist social change. These people usually do not have any political power or influence and use unconventional means to pursue their interest. History is full of such examples where people have taken a course of action whenever they have found that there is a problem which is not being addressed adequately. Social movements have a clear goal and a strategy to achieve that goal or their aim. Apart from the types of movements namely reformist, revolutionary, redemptive, alternative and reactionary social movements, we can also differentiate between old social movements and new social movements. The difference between the two that is old and new social movements is based on the nature and content of the social movement. Let us discuss these two categories in detail. Majority of the social movements in the 20th century were class based movements. These were mainly the anti-colonial or the working class movements. While the anti-colonial movements mobilized and united people in the struggle for freedom against the colonial rule, the working class movement on the other hand united the working class to fight for their rights and better working conditions against the capitalist class. The old social movements emerged in order to reorganize the existing and established power relations. Their central goal was to challenge the authority or the domination of the colonial powers. The old social movements, particularly the nationalist movement, functioned within the broad framework of political parties. For example, the Indian National Movement was led by the Indian National Congress. Congress was a political party. In the old social movements, the role of political parties was central. This was a period when nationalist movements were actively mobilizing and organizing masses to overthrow the colonial powers world over like the British in Indian society. As a consequence of nationalist movements and struggle for freedom, the middle of 20th century witnessed end of imperialism and a large number of nations got independence from the colonial rule during this time only, that is after the second world war. Nationalist movement in India was effective in promoting a strong sense of nationalism among people and generating awareness for sovereignty and freedom among masses. If we talk about the working class movement, the working class movement emerged in the West as a result of industrial revolution. The change in the economic organization of European society led to the change in the social relations as well. What does this mean? This means that with industrial revolution, when production shifted from the domestic level to factory, the social structure also changed. A new class of people working on wages in the factories emerged which was also class called as the working class. The working class comprised of people with different levels of skills. Skills such as skilled workers, semi-skilled workers and unskilled workers who worked in the factories and earned wages for living according to the level of skill they had. The personal and informal relations of traditional economies got replaced with formal and impersonal relations in complex industrial societies. The labor was made to work in inhuman conditions and was paid far less than the value of his actual labor. The extra labor or work done by the worker was appropriated by the capitalist as the profit. Over the period of time, working class got united against the exploitation done by the capitalist class. The class based movements united workers together to fight for their rights. Besides bringing about the establishment of communist and socialist states all across the world, such as the erstwhile Soviet Union, you know, China, Cuba. The workers' movements also led to reform of capitalist or capitalist form of economic organization. What does this mean? The working class movements in the capitalist West were fighting for higher wages, better bargaining power, pensions, better living conditions, social and health security, free education from the state. 
The working class movement strengthened the ideology of socialism and many countries adopted socialist form of economic organization. For example, India adopted mixed economy, that is the feature of the socialist as well as the capitalist form of economic organization. The creation of welfare state that protected workers' rights and offered universal education, free health care and social security to the workers in the capitalist countries, particularly in Europe, came into existence during this era because of large political pressure created by communist and socialist movements. Despite repression, these movements refused to die. Many European countries offered welfare benefits and elaborate social security to its citizens. The movement against colonialism for sovereignty has been as strong as workers' movements against the capitalism. This is because capitalism and colonialism have often been seen as interrelated through the forms of imperialism. The imperial powers of the Europe were capitalistic in nature and they exploited both the labour back home and natives in the colonies for their benefits. The workers' movement and the nationalist movements targeted both these forms of exploitation simultaneously, which was in fact two sides of the same coin. Nationalist movements have mobilised against the rule of the colonial power as well as the, against the dominance of the foreign capital or imperial powers. Since 1950s, new types of social movements have emerged on global scene. These movements have different intent and content and that is why they are different from the old social movements. These movements have a global character. The new movements are mobilizing people at international level. Unlike the nationalist movements, which were confined to people within a nation state, the new movements have emerged in the last half of the 20th century and they have an international appeal. In fact, you can take an example that during 1960s and early 70s, Western forces led by the US Army were involved in a violent conflict in the former French colony Vietnam against the communist guerrillas. World over, this war was criticized and condemned, particularly in Europe. The city of Paris had become the center for vibrant and violent students' movement that joined workers' parties in the series of agitations and strikes protesting against this war. Thousands of students and young men in services joined the anti-war movement who were also being forced to compulsorily go and fight the war in the Vietnam. During this time, United States of America was also experiencing a surge of social protest. The civil rights movement fighting for the rights of the African Americans led by Martin Luther King had been followed by the Black Power movement. At the same time, environmental movements and women's rights movement also gained strength and they led to a large number of social upheavals. The new social movements were not limited by or belonged to a particular class or even a nation. They were not tied by the space. Instead of sharing a class or a national identity, the new social movements appealed and mobilized people across nations. The participants in the new social movements shared identities say as students, women, blacks, environmentalists or professionals. A number of social movements also emerged in India during this time. The rise of these movements is attributed to the growing dissatisfaction among people with parliamentary democracy in India. Scholars argue that the institutions of the state were captured by the elite. Even if India was a democracy, despite being a successful democracy, so-called successful, the voices of the poor remained unheard. Discontented or dissatisfied or unhappy with the system, those who were left out by the formal political system joined social movements and no party or political formation in order to put pressure on the state combined with them and these people put pressure on the political system. Political scientists argue that in the contemporary times, old class based social movements led by trade unions and workers parties are declining. It is also argued that in rich, affluent and western developed countries, the welfare model has changed the social equations. The new social movements pertain to new issues and problems. They are not concerned with class-based exploitation or inequality or any other kind of traditional concern. So unlike the old social movements, the new social movements are not attempting to change the distribution of power in society. In the contemporary times, the broader concept of civil society encompasses both the old and new social movement. 
what is civil society? Civil society refers to the aggregate of non-governmental organizations and institutions that manifest interest and will of citizens. Second feature, civil society is a group of individuals and organizations in a society which functions independent of the government. As civil society covers a vast range of activities, it is very difficult to identify the functional boundaries of civil society. That is, what is the sphere or area of activity of a civil society? Scholars call civil society a public space between the state, the market and the ordinary citizens in which people can debate, discuss and take action. Reflecting the essence of social movements, civil society means any voluntary collective activity in which people combine to achieve change on a particular issue. These groups include human rights campaign, women rights, environmental group, neighborhood self-help schemes, tribal activists, international bodies like UN or the Red Cross, even religious organizations working in the field of social welfare and reform. It also includes workers' unions, pressure groups, trade unions and organizations working in the field of removing poverty, improving health and hygiene, education and living standard of women and children. Let us discuss about old and new social movements in Indian society. A number of social movements emerged in India involving peasants, women, tribal, Dalit workers, Adivasis, students, etc. But how do we classify these movements as old or new social movements? Scholars comment that the issues about social inequality and unequal distribution of resources has always been and continues to be an important element of social movements in India. Like peasants have mobilized themselves for better prices of their crops and have protested against the cuts in the subsidy by the government. Time and again, women have collectively raised their voice against gender discrimination in diverse spheres like workplace or for the domestic rights within the family. Dalits or the lower caste have also collectively acted against the exploitation of the upper caste landlords and labors from the new caste against the money lenders. So, there is enough evidence to demonstrate that people in India have always been actively participating in social life. Over the years with modernization and general change in society, social movements have taken up new issues. These can be called as new social movements. These movements are not just about social inequality, nor are they restricted to a particular caste, group or community. The new social movements cut across the specific boundaries of caste and class. They cut across the boundaries of identity politics. These issues, what they take up as now new social movements, are against corruption, women's safety, cultural anxieties, long term you know, uh, benefits to the workers in terms of health and education. They are part of professional associations, professional aspirations and they are determining shape of the social movements. These social movements, the new social movements, unite people across caste and class boundaries. For instance, if we talk of new age social movements among women, this includes women from both rural and urban areas, from upper class and middle class and even lower class. It also includes women from educated, employed and uneducated and unemployed poor peasant women categories. The regional movements demanding for separate statehood also draw people together from different groups who may not share a homogeneous caste or class identity, yet they are here for a common statehood cause. The social movement in modern India can be located on a wide spectrum of issue, from challenging traditional social inequality on one hand to the issues like reservation and anti-corruption on the other. So to conclude, let's summarize what we discussed in this lecture class. In this lecture, we discussed about the emergence of discipline of sociology can be seen as a response to the study of social change and how social movements have led to social transformation. We discussed about old social movements, particularly the nationalist movement and the working class movements. And then we discussed about the new social movements against the old social movements, which includes some of the examples of environmental movements, women's movements and issue based on languages. In the next part of this chapter, we will discuss about various theories of social movement. Till then, you can enjoy reading this part of the chapter. Thank you.